Measures of Position, section 2.5. So in this section, we're going to cover um, quartiles of a data set, creating a box and whisker plot, interpreting fractiles, and determining and interpret the standard score. Fractiles are numbers that partition or divide an ordered data set into equal parts. Quartiles are a type of fractiles. They divide a set into four equal parts. That is going to be the most important fractile that we are going to cover right now. First quartile is called Q1, and about one quarter of the data fall below Q1. The second quartile is Q2. It is also the median of our data set, and half of the data falls below, falls on or below Q2. The third quartile, about three quarters of the data, fall on or below Q3. So, some other percentiles and fractiles. Quartiles, like I said, into four equal parts, deciles into ten equal parts, and another thing that we'll use in this course a lot, which are percentiles, divide something into well, data specifically, 100 equal parts. So, for an example, the test scores of 15 employees enrolled in a CPR training course are listed. Find the first, second, and third quartiles of the test scores. First things first, we're going to have to order the data just to find the median. We've already covered finding the median, so I'm not going to cover that again, but how to find the median right here is Q2. So that means below the median is the lower half of our data, and above the median is the upper half of our data. If we now want to find Q1 and Q3, we simply find the median of both halves. So we find the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. This is if you want to do it by hand. We are going to use Excel to do this for us. So I've already put the data into Excel, so I'm going to go to Excel right here, and I'm going to type in Q1, Q2, and Q3. Over here, I'm going to go to, I'm going to hit equals. I'm going to type in quartile, Q-U-A-R-T-I-L-E, and then put in my parenthesis. Then I'm going to insert my data by highlighting my data from A2 to A16 and close my parenthesis. Now, there's one thing I forgot to do right there is to tell Excel which quartile we are talking about. So I'm going to have to put a comma and a 1, and that tells Excel to find the first quartile. And in our case, it's 10.5. The second quartile, I'm going to do the exact same thing, equals Q-U-A-R-T-I-L-E, parenthesis, my data from A2 to A16, comma, 2 for the second quartile. And it's going to find the median of the data set, which is also Q2. For Q3, I do the exact same thing again, equals quartile, parenthesis, put in my data. But the only thing that changes is now I have to tell Excel, okay, find the third quartile for me. And I close my parenthesis, and it finds the third quartile for me. This is how we'll do it in our course. So if we look right here, about one-fourth of the employees scored 10 or less. Excel told us 10.5. It's a little more accurate. This was done by hand. And about one-half scored 15 or less. And about three-fourths scored 18 or less. So what these quartiles do is break our data into four parts like we had discussed. This is one part, two part, three part, and four parts. So this would be one-fourth between Q1 and Q2 is another fourth. Between Q2 and Q3 is another fourth, and Q3 and above is yet another fourth. So depending upon how I want to look at this data, I can find different informations about it. I can say one-fourth is below Q1. I can say half is below Q2. I can also say between Q1 and Q3 is half of our data, because that would be two-fourths as well. So the next thing we're going to look at, look at is a box and whisker plot. For a box and whisker plot is an exploratory data analysis tool. It highlights important features of a data set and requires a five number summary. So we take our quartiles and we include the minimum and the maximum value to show where our box and whisker plot starts and ends. So drawing a box and whisker plot. First, I need to find the five number summary of the data set. Then I need to construct a horizontal scale that spans the range, which is shown below, and then plot the five numbers above the horizontal scale. So the dot is the minimum entry, then we have a whisker to Q1, and this is where our box starts. We started at Q1 to Q3, and then we also draw a line in the middle here at the median, the third dot. The fourth dot is going to be Q3, and the last one is the maximum entry. Draw a box above the horizontal scale from Q1 to Q3, and then draw a vertical line in Q2, and you've created a box and whisker plot. So for our example, here's the box and whisker plot. 
About half of the scores are between 10 and 18. I had discussed that earlier, but we know that this is 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, and 1 fourth, so I can use these two fourths to say half is in here. So notice my minimum value is 5, Q1 is 10, Q2 is 15, Q3 is 18, and the max is 37. So I simply draw a whisker from 5 to 10, a line continuing from 10 to 15, another line continuing from 15 to 18, and then a whisker from 18 to 37. And then I draw a box from Q1 to Q3, or in our case, 10 to 18. I also want a vertical line at 10, and this gives me a lot of information about our data set, much more than just the data arranged in numerical form. So, interpreting percentiles. The O give represents the cumulative frequency distribution for SAT test scores of college-bound students in a recent year. What test score represents the 72nd percentile? So I go over here on the left, the y-axis, and go up to 72nd. And then I would trace that all the way to the O give over here until I hit it. And then once I hit it, I'll notice that I'm about 1700. Therefore, 72% corresponds to a test score of 1700. That means 72% of the students that took the SAT scored of or less than 1700. Now, we can't compare the SAT scores of all students because some took the SAT out of 1600 and some took it out of 2400, and there's probably even more variations ab upon that. So one thing we have to do to compare data sets that are out of different numbers is to find the standard score. So standard score, or z-score, represents the number of standard deviation a given value x falls from the mean. So to find the standard score, we're going to have z equals our value minus our mean divided by our standard deviation. Or in symbols, x minus mu divided by standard deviation. So for this example, in 2007, Forrest Whitaker won the Best Actor Oscar at age 45 for his role in the movie The Last King of Scotland. Helen Mirren won the Best Actress Oscar at age 61 for her role in The Queen. The mean age of all Best Actor winners is 43.7 with a standard deviation of 8.8. .8. The mean age of all Best Actress winners is 36 with a standard deviation of 11.5. Find the z-scores that correspond to the age for each actor or actress, then compare your results. So, since Force Waker is 45 and the mean for actors is 43.7, we can't just simply compare them without finding the standard score since Helen's 61, but the mean average in her set is 36. Very different. So, for Force Whitaker, we're going to take his data, his age, 45, minus the mean, 43.7, and divide it by 8.8. .8. That equals 0.15 standard deviations above the mean. The closer to the mean, the better for z-scores. Helen Mirren is 61 minus 36, divided by 11.5, therefore 2.17 standard deviations above the mean. She is definitely older in her field than Forrest Whitaker is in his field, because she's 2.17 standard deviations above the mean. So if we compare them, you would see that he, Forrest Whitaker, falls within 0.15 in the usual scores of his age. Now, Helen falls in out of two standard deviations, so she's in the unusual age for winning the best actress. And if someone falls without beyond three, is very unusual scores. So she is relatively older, whereas the age of Forrest Whitaker is only slightly higher than the average age of other Best Actor winners. And so that's it for 2.5, and um, that's it.